Hello. I just wanted to share something with everyone, for those who are uh, going to listen, about something that I was studying over the past couple of days. And uh, the thing that I wanted to study was um, the word bind, because uh, when Jesus was in the earth, he taught his disciples um, to bind uh, the enemy. And um, at church on Sunday, there was a discussion about, you know, demons being bound and then being set free. And then some were, someone counteracted that they understood that when demons were um, bound, that they were they were chained, they were they were locked up, they were imprisoned. And so I wanted to be sure for myself. So I did a study and um, those uh, the second person, I believe, was correct because it does mean in the Strong's um, number 1,195 says to tie up, to bind. Um, they become a prisoner, someone under arrest. Um, 1,199 says the chain, fetter, imprisonment, imprisonment bonds. Um, 1,200 means jailer or warden or keeper of the prison and this is where it got interesting and i feel like it's interesting because there are you know various many 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 descriptive words and that uh, describe the word bind but this particular one is talking about being a, a jailer somebody who's in charge of to watch over and to guard those um things that are imprisoned and if you look up uh, the Strong's number um, 5,442, means to obey, keep, to guard, to watch. Um, and 1314 means to guard carefully. And so I thought that was interesting because are we to be guarders of the things that are imprisoned? The evil things. And I believe we are. And um, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about how the gates of hell should not pre prevail. And the gates of hell can't prevail because they're, they're static. They don't move. And yes, there could be various gates of hell um, around. However, if we bind them in the name of Jesus and we put them to where they belong, back into hell, back behind the gates of hell, um, I believe they stay. I believe that they're chained. I believe that they're fettered. I believe that they're imprisoned. And I believe also that if there is somebody who's going to be a jailer or a guard or a keeper of those things that are imprisoned, that that would be Christians. So if we were, not everybody obviously, but some people are called to do different things. But if you just think of it this way, if we're to stand in front of the gates or guard the gates so that the enemy is not allowed out, that will keep people from being deceived. But also if people are wanting to get in and we share with them the gospel, um, we are keeping them safe also. And what's interesting is as I began to continue this study, it, like I said, it took a couple of days because it was quite lengthy. So number 1210 means to imprison. And then when you add that, which it adds it in the Strong's Concordance, with 5259, it says by or with. And then 5265 is with sandals. So it's talking about being imprisoned with sandals. And I thought, well, how does that tie in with imprisoning the enemy and keeping him bound and guarding the enemy so he doesn't get back out? And so I continued. And as it comes about, it's telling us in the Bible that our feet need to be bound with sandals so we're guarding with sandals and so of course my mind is starting to think okay well how does this connect and uh john when jesus was uh coming to the earth and coming into his ministry mark retells the account of what john says in mark 1 7 and john when john is saying i am worthy to undo uh, the sandals of Jesus. And if you look up shod, which, you know, to wear shoes or to wear sandals, it means to lock up, to bolt, or to put sandals on, 
or to provide sandals to somebody. And I thought, well, for goodness sakes, this whole time that I've um, believed the Bible and studied the Bible, I didn't understand that there was a connection between sandals being shod and taking the enemy captive and keeping the enemy captive. Because what Jesus does is he washes our feet and then like in the disciples day, he washed the feet and they put their sandals back on. He's able to cleanse us from that sin. He's able to wash the dirt of the enemy because we dance on the head of the enemy and the dirt ends up getting on our feet and we're able to wash our feet, put our sandals back on. We are also supposed to be um, prepared with the shoes of the gospel of peace. So if we stand guard at the gates of hell, we are able to, by binding the enemy, putting him in his place and binding sandals on our feet, we were able to lock the enemy where he needs to be away from um, Christians and away from uh, situations, et cetera, et cetera. We are also able to provide other people with the gospel of peace and provide them with sandals so that they too are able to walk in peace and they too are able to bind the enemy. And then I was thinking about how uh, John said uh, through Mark that he wasn't able to undo the uh, the sandals of Jesus because he was unworthy. And what I understand, the first verse that comes to my head for undo is or undone is Isaiah when he sees the Lord high and lifted up and he says, woe is me for I am a man of unclean lips. I'm undone. And undone means to be destroyed and cut off. So therefore, if your sandals are undone or you don't have them, you are cut off from the kingdom of heaven. And so the enemy becomes cut off because obviously he doesn't get shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. But when we don't wear the shoes or the enemy takes those from us, we are now um, not living how we're supposed to be living. And... So then I thought, okay, well, where else is it that people are unworthy to undo something, unworthy to destroy something? And it's found in Revelation 5.5 5 when the Apostle Paul, a.k.a. Saul, um, when he wept, when he was seeing the vision, it said that he wept for about a half an hour because there was no one in heaven. They couldn't find anybody in heaven to break the seals, to destroy, to cut off the enemy entirely. And an angel came and said to him, don't cry, don't weep, because the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the scroll and loose the seals. Only Jesus is able to undo the undo and break and cut off the enemy completely. And that's what happens in the last day. So I just wanted to encourage people. I know the times are crazy out there, uh, but I just want to let you know that God prevails. God has a plan. There are many people who still says too that people walk back and forth because they don't have a place. That's similar to the enemy not having a place. We know that there's a place in heavenly places, a seat for everybody. And I just want to encourage you to continue to bring the gospel forth. Be prepared to give sandals to people by casting the demons out and by um, imprisoning them. And I pray that God will give you more of an understanding about this as you pray and as you go through your days. And I bless you in Jesus name.